Hello and welcome to the video. This video is about how to build one of the modern head trackers. Now this is a DIY head tracker. The components will cost you about £24. Uh, this one is connected onto the side of my DJI goggles, which is what people seem to want them for. Uh, head trackers are not new. Head trackers have been around for a very long time. In fact, uh, I've been using the Trinity head trackers in my fat shark goggles which are fantastic they're hidden away in here and that's actually what the ht on top of the goggles is actually standing for now there are two videos if you're interested in the head trackers i recommend go and have a look first one is this one this is all about how to uh, set up head trackers in modern open tx on radios like this radio master uh, but it'll work in your tyrannus QX7, your jumper or whatever. Uh, it's incredibly easy these days, so go and check that one out. Link down below. The second one is another video where I then showed how to forward those channels on via your flight controller so it can control a pan and tilt gimbal, which is, let's be honest, kind of what we're using the head tracker stuff for. Now, this new project that I'm using to build this, uh, run by a gentleman called Cliff, so I want to say a fantastic thank you to people like Cliff who put all the time and effort and energy into making things easier, is uh, using something called the Arduino BLE. The Arduino BLE is one of the new boards or newer boards from Arduino that already has the accelerometers, gyros, and even a compass on there. So all of the sensors it needs to detect the movement of the head tracker so it can relay that to the radio and the flight controller or just the receiver if that's the way you're doing it is all built in and that makes it dead easy. The old version of the project that I used to build stuff from that also people like Quantum used for their head tracker, you can't get this for love and money anymore, but now you don't have to because you can build your own. That was quite a complicated project. You had to get the Arduino, you had to then get an external sensor board, you had to wire it all together. With this, you only need a handful of components. You need the Arduino BLE. You're going to need some way to power it. Uh, on mine, I've added a little 2S balance connector. You're going to need a momentary switch. Uh, I put mine in the middle. That's a little 6mm by 6mm uh, PCB mounting switch, but you could use anything that is just a push to close. And then you need either a cable to go into your radio. If you're going to need, use a cable, and I am because that's what we need for these radios, uh, and this project supports it just like all the other ones do. Uh, however, this will also allow you to wirelessly connect to your FreeSky radio if it has the wireless trainer function as well, so you can just forget about the cable altogether. So all those bits are probably going to cost you £23, £24, or probably less than $30. Uh, I found that if you shop around for things like the Arduino BLE, uh, you can get it quite cheaply. So, links to everything I'm talking about below. Let me go through the first couple of steps and show you how I've built mine. So the first thing I recommend once you have your Arduino BLE, before you start reaching for the soldering iron and doing tons of soldering, is to flash the firmware onto the board. Now with the older projects you had to download the Arduino IDE and you had to mess around with drivers and all that buggering about. You don't have to do any of that. Again, big thank you to Cliff for creating this project because not only has he made it super easy, he's also created the graphical user interface you use to do everything including flashing, setting up and setting all the parameters. So you need to go on to the project website and you need to download the zip file and then unpack the zip file into a folder onto your computer. So in here, the head tr tracker GUI, I'm going to click on the head tracker icon on here and now we're ready to go. So it's going to start the head tracker application. And there we are, uh, we are ready to go. Again, this is 0 0.72 I'm using here. I think 0 0.8 has currently been worked on as I'm recording this, so do stay uh, up with everything. So we're gonna plug the USB cable into our Arduino BLE, and then it's going to boot. And then to connect to it, we need to just click the refresh button by the side of the COM ports. It should pick the one that uh, you need, and then click on connect. Now, obviously, this isn't going to work because it hasn't got the right firmware on. But the fact the COM ports appeared and the, the board has booted and the lights are all on is a really, really good sign. So the next job then is we need to flash the firmware onto the board so that we can carry on. Now, the firmware is all listed in here, again, for the different boards and things that are uh, supported. Again, we've got the Nano BLE here. I'm going to use the latest version. Now, what we need to do to put the board into bootloader mode 
is we need to double press the little white button in the middle. Press, press, and then the little amber light starts pulsing and that's in bootloader. So now, if I go onto the computer, then if I go back into upload firmware, uh, pick the right one that I want, and then click on the refresh button, you'll notice it's a different COM port, and that's completely expected. Then we'll say upload selected, and it will just sit away and uh, do what it needs to do. So we're just not going to speed this up, so you can see exactly how long this takes on yours. But once we've done this, then we'll have to calibrate it. So programming successful, that is really good news. So let's close that out. Waiting for the board to boot. And then what we'll do, uh, let's refresh the available serial ports because it should have come back as COM2, which it has. Click connect. And now we're talking to it as a head tracker. However, calibration hasn't been done, so we'll do that first. First thing we're going to have to do is to place it on a level surface and wait for everything to settle down. You'll notice uh, everything will drift initially after it's first been booted. So wait for the offset values, the blue ones, to be completely settled down before you hit the next button. I did that a little bit too fast. You can always come back in here and recalibrate. Next one is the magnetometer calibration and here you just have to flip it round and round and round and round and round until eventually it allows you to save. Once that is done, you've done your calibration and by moving it around on the desktop here, I can see all the different pieces moving at the bottom. We can decide which channels we want, where the PPM output pin is, which is the center button, uh, which is the range, whether or not the, where the gains are. Everything is configurable through here, but I've left mine as completely default. But it's fun to play with this because at this point you know that your board is all working and now it's time to solder everything on. Now for the components that I'm putting onto my board, I'm following the standard wiring diagram for a PPM cable. Again, because I'm not using it with a FreeSky radio. If you're using a FreeSky radio, all you do is you just connect the different pieces as per the wiring diagram. So I have my Arduino BLE that's now flashed with the firmware. I have a little 6mm by 6mm PCB mounting momentary push to close switch. Again, links below. And I'm also going to use a little 2S balance connector so that I can run it from a little battery when it's on the goggles. It will also run from a 5 volt supply that you can use via the uh, via the, the pins at the side or via the USB. It's got a pretty broad voltage input range on this. You can run it from anything to 5 to 20 volts. So that's a 2, 3 or 4S battery. So I laid all of mine out and then very carefully... Uh, made off each of those connections as per the wiring diagram in option two. And there's only about six or seven bits of soldering that you need to do, and then all of the things are connected together. For me to make it so that the three and a half millimeter jack is removable, I have incorporated an extra piece here. I'm using a PCB mounted three and a half millimeter stereo jack connector, and that just means that the cable isn't connected all the time. But you can make it really easy. Just get any old stereo cable or even a mono cable, clip one end off, strip the wires back, find the two wires that go to the tip and to the, the main part of the body of the end and then just solder them to the correct places. With all of the soldering done, then it's a quick connection back to the computer and power it back up to make sure that it all works and that by pressing the centering button, that's exactly what happens. And then once that's done, then you can test it by plugging it into the trainer port on your radio and moving it around and away you go. You can see everything is working beautifully. So that's all there is to it. This is an awful lot easier. Remember that the interface that you download uh, that I've just showed is where you can decide what pins you want, whether you want it inverted or uninverted. Uh, how I showed it in the video is how it's working with my Radio Master. So standard PPM output on the D10 pin, which is where uh, the connected to the tip of the three and a half millimeter jack and uninverted and it's working great uh, pressing the little button in the middle uh, centers it um, and that's fab I'm just really really uh, excited about this little project it's such a cute little thing to do 
Again, you don't have to be as fancy as me uh, going to the trouble of designing and printing a 3D case. Uh, if you're interested, I could do the link to it if you really want it. It's made of three parts and you and you kind of super glue it together. Uh, but actually, you could just as easy, once you've got all the pieces soldered together, just have a little piece of balsa wood, hot glue the pieces onto there and wrap it in insulation tape. And then with a bit of uh, double-sided foam tape or even a little bit of something like Velcro, you could attach it to whichever goggles you're interested in. Uh, it doesn't have to be these, but I think this is what everyone is after head trackers for these days. Um, and then you can set up a pan and tilt setup on your plane or quad or whatever it is you're flying and actually have the camera following you around as you move your head. Uh, just be aware, of course, that as, as you move the head tracker, if it's mounted in different orientations, uh, what it will detect as a pan motion will be different depending on how you've got it mounted. You can change that in the GUI, uh, but I would just, when you're setting it up on your radio, just see which is the channel value that corresponds to the movement that you're interested in and set that up for the movement that you need on the particular gimbal that you've got. Uh, but hopefully that's interesting. Uh, again, links to all the stuff below. And uh, if you make one, best of luck. But this is amazing for the kind of money that we're paying and incredibly simple compared to how complicated it used to be. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.